Right, a couple of jobs to do on the old stag. I'm going to, uh, not a huge amount of interest in this video, but uh, I thought I might video it for you. If you want to watch it, watch it. If you don't, don't. But uh, basically, what I'm looking at doing here, it needs an oil change. I'm supposed to change the oil on these things every 3,000 miles um, with a quality 2050 oil, of course. Um, and. Um, stormy out there um, and a decent oil filter so I'll go through all this explain what I'm doing and how I'm going on if you like the video give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs down if you must if you're interested in how I might improve the channel and you give me a thumbs down or choose to give me a thumbs down then uh, please feel free to drop me an email or mention in the comments below why you think it needs a thumb down and I might be able to improve the situation there will be some tripod action in this video. Alright, so let's crack on with this thing. And if you need to contact me, Church House Classics one word, at gmail.com. Thank you for watching. Oh, subscribe as well. Yeah, hit the old subscribe button. It's only about 35% of my viewings have subscription. So you're either watching it without logging on to YouTube or people are watching on the telly. Yeah, but please subscribe. Then I'll help the channel. I guess. I don't know. I don't know if it does or not. YouTube. Let me know. Um, anyway, what it does do is it boosts me. I know people like the shit I'm doing. I think it's helpful. Right, let's crack on with this crap. Right, here we go. So we're on the tripod now. Right, oil filters. So this is the type that I favour. Um, they come in many different options. This one's from Classic Gold. Oil filter authentic reproduction the main thing i like about this one is it's got the uh, the ring the metal ceiling ring oh, oh, oh is actually part of the body some of these filters that's the part number gfe 147 some of these filters came with a cardboard ring around here which was kind of glued on and there was a production issue with some of those that meant that the cardboard ring shifted just very very slightly the cardboard ring shifted um, and then it caused problems because the cardboard ring would then allow uh, unfiltered oil to bypass the oil filter so why don't i use the screw on filters i'll position the camera this way so you can see the swallows flying in and out of the nest behind my head it's there they're not very happy with me at the moment in fact they shat all over my car so i'm not all very happy with them either um but um yeah so the reason i kind of fell out of love with the screw on filter and its adapter uh, the engine wasn't designed to have that the engine was designed to have a filter bowl that you put one of these type of filters into okay and it's got like a little uh, non-return bit in the bottom of a spring and it's it's painless improvements are kind of one of those things that happens quite regularly in the uh, in the automotive world that people improve things on their cars and they think ah that's an improvement it's modern so therefore it's got to be better i didn't find this to be the case with the screw on filter or why heretic burn the heretic i can hear you all shouting well, first and foremost, uh, the adapter uh, comes in the form of a ring Fadar, that screws onto the bottom of the engine block, looks like this. And it seals in and it's held in place by this big threaded adapter. Um, and the idea then is the other end of the threaded adapter um, takes a normal screw on oil filter when i say normal it takes a screw on oil filter rather than the paper cartridge um my experiences with this well good initially fantastic oh this is outstanding look screw on oil filter bloody 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 blah and then we started having little problems with it so first and foremost um access uh, where the oil filter is on the stag it's not really good so if you're not geared up with the kind of the kind of grippy tools that pull the old oil filter off then it's difficult to get a screwdriver into it as soon as you put a screwdriver into it you try and then you've got oil dripping up your arm so you defeated the purpose of the damn thing already so you think right okay well i go and buy the expensive grippy thing that takes the oil filter or the screw on oil filter off
I mean, great, okay. So did all that crap, spent even more money than the screw-on adapter. Uh, because the filters themselves, they're comparable in price. I think they're much the same as these things, the filter itself. But you buy the adapter, you fit the adapter to your car, then you buy the special tool to take the screw-on filter off rather than a 916 socket. Um, and then I changed the oil at home on my car, on this white stag. Changed your filter at home. It's back in my parents' house. They went berserk again. This is how long I've had this car, because they moved out of that house decades ago. Um, as did I. But for some reason, the car was stored in their garage when I first got it. I'll do, I'll do a beer and bollocks section about my, my love for my Triumph Stag and how it all came about. Um, but, um, <clears throat> so, I changed the oil, got a new oil filter, took the old one off using my special tool, which wasn't particularly cheap, rather than a chain wrench or anything like that, because there just isn't the room. Um, put the new filter on, topped it up with oil, reversed the car down the driveway and left a nice big stripe of oil on the driveway. What the fuck? Got under the car and what had actually happened was I'd loosened the adapter very, very slightly when I was trying to get the oil filter off, because let me go and get one. Right, so I'm all gloved up at the moment because what I've got here is a small oil filter with a remote housing. This is not stag related, this is just to demonstrate the problem I had with, with these screw-on type filters on the stag using the adapter. Um, this little fella I use to clean the, uh, the, 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 I guess, the degreasing fluid in my parts washer. If I unscrew this, you can already see that there's quite a lot of effort required to break the seal. Oh, oh, oh. Now this thing's not even been up to temperature yet. But the idea behind this is probably going to be absolutely full of oil and gank as well, because this has been on my parts washer. Um, so aside from the access issues, you've got a long thread and it's at an angle, so it'll be dripping oil all over the place already. God, look at that shit in there. Right. So effectively what you've got on any screw on oil filter is this rubber ring banar, around the outside here. And that mates against a flat surface on the inside of the adapter or the engine block, as is quite common on any modern car that has an oil filter. And the idea is, as you do it up, the rubber seal or, or grips against the housing and compresses, and you do them up nice and tight, and they don't leak. Okay? But when it comes to undo it, more force is required to undo it than was required to do it up because you're overcoming the friction. So what then happens is, or what happened to me in this particular case, is you've got the adapter above here. As I'm trying to undo it, I'm undoing the bloody adapter. Yeah, now, and yet on this particular occasion, I'd undone the fuel filter, sorry, oil filter, and it had loosened just very, very, very slightly, not so much that I'd noticed, loosened the adapter. So when I screwed the filter back on again, um, it didn't actually seal against the engine block. So the filter had sealed against the adapter, but the adapter no longer was sealed against the engine block. And so the oil was leaking um, past the O-ring, and there's no ring on these things. Um, it looks very much like the standard OE O-ring. So that's no ring here that goes up inside the engine block. And then that goes there and the bowl goes over the top of it. Well, on the adapter, that's needed. That is still needed inside the engine block, that O-ring. Still with me? You are, good, right. right. Back to me then, Richard. Okay, so we'd established the problem. Um, I then had to get my special tool out again to get the oil filter off. The problem I've got now is that the oil filter is held against the adapter, uh, which is um, spinning freely on the block. So I'm trying, oh, for fuck's sake. So now I've got oil all over the place. There's a stripe of oil down the middle of my parents' driveway. My mother's not home yet. I've got to try and work out if I can get the car running and out of there as quickly as I possibly can before she comes home and goes berserk at me again. She passed on now, my mother, but uh, yeah, <laughs> she used to go to berserk at me a lot. Um, anyway, so I can't remember the problem, but I ended up having to stab this fucking oil filter and hold the adapter to the block to actually get the bloody thing undone. I can't remember the exact issue, but oh, what a ball's ache. So then of course, um, I had to take the adapter off. I had to change the O-ring at the top, put the adapter back on, torque it up, 
go and buy another oil filter. Of course, you know, I had to walk up to the motor factors to get another oil filter. It's a fairly common oil filter, this thing. Get another oil filter, put it all back on again, and then get some driveway cleaner to clean the driveway. So I'm thinking, this is a fucking balls ache. This is not an improvement to this car. It really isn't. It's just my personal opinion here, folks. Don't go berserk about it. So then, um, a little bit more information started coming out about some of these adapters. I'm sure the, the issues have been overcome now. But effectively, what you've got is you've got two O-rings on the adapter. The large O-ring goes into the block and the adapter seats up against it. Because the adapter's got two oil paths going through the middle of it, there's a smaller O-ring that goes in the middle, which is supposed to seal um, the oil return through the centre of the oil filter. Um, and rumours started to come out uh, that uh, perhaps if the outer ring um, hadn't gone in, or there was two of them in there because previous owner hadn't realised that there was one of these in there already and put two in there, there was a rumour that perhaps these um, inner rings um, might not be clamped tight. And if they're not clamped tight, then you're going to allow unfiltered oil to bypass and go straight back into the engine because it's the poison of least resistance. So I'm thinking, well, not only have we got an improvement here that loosens itself off and still needs expensive tools. Well, I say expensive, but it needs specialist tools to remove the oil bowl without using a screwdriver to stab it through your finger and end up with oil dripping off your elbow still because you're working upside down doing the bloody job. But now you've got a level of built-in uncertainty. Is it sealed? Has it sealed? So I'm then thinking, I better take it off and just double check it. And then of course you take it off and how do you double check it? Well, you take it off and then, I don't know, you use some engineered blue or some blue tack or something and then uh, put it all back together again and see if it's mated on the inner ring. Well, to be honest, at that point, I thought, back of this for a game of soldiers. So I took it off and just threw it in the, in the drawer. Um, and put the original oil filter bowl back on again. And it's been there ever since. So this is, unfortunately, this is a classic example of improvements that, for me, just brought pain. And there's, there's plenty of them out there, and I'm sure I'll document a few improvements that have just not worked. Um, I've got absolutely no issue whatsoever with people who want to improve their cars. I've got no issue at all with modifications to cars at all. Um, just some, I just think, are not worth the aggravation and the extra cost. It's, I guess it's the shiny thing syndrome. It's got to improve things. And then they persevere and they put up with all of the little issues that come with it. And it's not a particularly cheap adapter either. I know the oil filters are, are comparable, but if you've already got it on your car and you know that it's sealing, oh, oh, then there's probably no reason why you want to take it off the car. But it was just that level of uncertainty and the couple of issues I had with it and I thought, oh, I just can't be arsed with it. Back to the way it was supposed to be. Back to the way it was designed to be. Now, modern cars, or cars that were designed to have the screw-on filter, don't have this problem because the screw-on filter adapter is actually direct to the block. It doesn't have this little adapter that sits in between the engine block and the, um, and, and the oil filter itself. So because of that, they rarely cause problems. In fact, the biggest problems you'll find with a screw-on oil filter on a car that's designed to have one is the cheaper ones don't have the non-return valve properly fitted in them. Um, so this is one of the reasons why on Land Rovers, Range Rovers, Rover V8s, I always use the OE um, Land Rover oil filter because I've used various other brands of oil filters and I've generally found that the oil pressure light takes many seconds more to go out on a cold start each morning than it did with the OE filter. And I can only assume that's down to um, uh, some mechanism inside it, more than likely to be the um, the non-return valve that sits in, 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 in the actual oil filter casing itself, in the uh, disposable filter. So that's it, That that's me and screw on oil filters and Triumph Stags and just it being not an improvement in my humble opinion, not an improvement at all. So let's, um, let's bugger off now, let's go and uh, tear this thing apart. Right, we're up in the air, we're supported on axle stands. I've got my handy drip tray here. These are useful things, get a drip tray. If you haven't got a drip tray, get an old washing up bowl because they're brilliant for these kind of activities. Now, from the front of the car, steering rack, 
cross member, all the suspension and everything attaches to. Sorry about this one. I didn't actually do all of this. This was there before I got to it. Since then, I've always used a block of wood or a pad on here. Um, I need to tidy up. It seems someone's actually jacked this thing on the sump at some point in the past. Not me. 25 years ago. Um, it's quite dinky under here compared to uh, underneath the Range Rover. But that there is the oil filter. And you can see the proximity of exhaust and so forth and the chassis rails and the cross member. You're going to struggle to get a chain wrench around a cartridge filter. It's really, really, really close to the exhaust. So this is why you kind of need something other than a screwdriver to stab it with. Now all I use is a socket on the end here. So let me get myself organised. I shall mount you and then you can watch me shouting as I undo this thing. Ooh. Just looking at that over there. That's interesting. That might need a bit of a clean up. I don't know if that's there's just a fracture around there. I didn't do all this by the way, none of this crap under here. Dented chassis rails, it's anything to do with me. I'm a far more responsible stag owner than this. Um, it's not the best though, is it? I could tidy some of this stuff up at some point, but at the moment it's just it's a car that I use. Show cream. It's a car I use and a car I enjoy using, so I'm not bothered about a dented chassis rail or a scratched cross member. Yeah? supposed to be like that. Right, let's get you mounted up here. As you can see these things aren't exactly oil tight. It's very much a car of its uh, car of its time. When they stop dripping oil, apply more oil. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> I've got tripod lying on its side. Um, oh, socket. Stick. 96 feet. Oh, I've picked up half inch. Now obviously when you, uh, the other top tip I've got really for stags when you're doing this is I tend to change the oil filter when the engine's cold. Um, this gets bloody warm this thing, it's called the exhaust um, and you really want to be fucking round up here on the side of a hot engine. So I change the filter first, then I warm it up to drain the oil out of the sump, drain plug and the sump is just here. This thing wasn't even particularly tight so. Right, now it's going to start to drip. This is where Mr. Drip Tray comes in. Um, I'm wearing gloves because used engine oil is carcinogenic, or can be carcinogenic. It's got harmful substances in it. You really don't want to be getting this shit on your bare skin. So we'll undo the bolt. That's it out, I believe. No, not quite. It is now. You can feel the bolt is out. Okay, and then it's a case of knocking the oil filter up. That much oil on my hands. That much. That's all I got. Alright? So all this shit about these paper filters makes such a horrendous mess. Uh, no, that's a load of bollocks that is, I'm afraid. Sorry, folks. Well, for me it is, anyway. What I'll do... Um, what I do like to do is I do like to fish around at the bottom of the oil filter bowl. So we'll return to the bench in a second. Um, and I like to have a fish around in the bottom there, just to make sure there's no metal particles in there. And then we need to pull the ring out for now. Pull the ring out of the block, put the new ring in, cover it with a smear of brand new engine oil, and then we'll screw the new filter back in again. So let us relocate. Actually being dive bombed by the bloody swallows now. So here what we've got, old filter comes out. There's a couple of important things in here you need to be aware of. First of all, is now i'm getting annoyed i appreciate that but i would be a lot more careful that is important don't chuck that bit away you often get stuck in the bottom of the filter like that don't chuck it away it's important you need it underneath that you've got a circlip and a spring and a spring now i can't see anything in the bottom of that filter so what I'm going to do is I am just going to clean this up in the parts washer and reassemble it with a new filter. I've replaced the seal down here. There's a seal there on the bolt. That one doesn't look too bad actually. I've probably got one somewhere. 
but uh, yeah, there's a seal there to stop the bolt dripping, but it wasn't really dripping before. Uh, let me uh, get myself cleaned up. And then we can parts wash and then reassemble. Okay, right, so let's reassemble this thing. Uh, now, because I'm a knob, between locating it from over there to here, I've lost the bloody um, clip. The circlip goes over it. Um, the only real purpose for the circlip sits in the groove here. The filter actually goes down below that anyway. I think the only purpose of the circlip is to stop the spring from working its way up inside this non return valve. So I'm pretty sure a washer will do the same thing. It doesn't cover over the non return holes. Yeah, so I think it will work. Let us on a postcard, please, if you think I'm a knob. Um, and that's not the case. Let's see if we can find a smaller washer that might be a bit better at doing that. That one's slightly smaller. It's a split washer. It'll do the job. Yeah, that's a smaller washer. That's even better. All I'm doing here is just stopping the spring from disappearing through the non-return valve. So that's that bit done. Now, obviously, that all needs to go in here, first of all. And then Mr. Spring. And then Mr. Washer. And then Mr. Non-return valve. That's all in. Mr. Filter sits in. And they're supposed to sit in a little bit proud like that. And when you push it down, it kind of goes inside the filter bowl. So that's that. Now, I'm going to get in. Fucking hell, we've got Mr. Dropsy going on today. I'll tell you one thing that clip probably would do. That clip would stop the bolt from falling right out, which is what it's doing now. Okie dokie. Right. Filter's back on. There he is. Up there somewhere. That much oil spill. Oh my goodness. Oh no. I'd say I deliberately took the um, drip tray out because, do you know, I thought I'm going to prove that you can get these things back in full up to the top with oil with barely a drop or two of oil. Now, when it comes to taking these feathers out, this is the O-ring that goes inside the block. What I generally find is a flat blade screwdriver wedged into it and turned a couple of times pushes one of these lips out of the uh, out of the gap. And you can see this thing's got a V profile where the the filter itself butted up against it. You need to replace that. You can't leave it in there. They, they do harden with age. This one's still quite compliant because it was only changed last year. Um, but that's that. Now, top up with oil next. So I'm going to drain the oil down again. I've been using the drip tray and a washing up bowl. And uh, yeah, let's get that changed. And as you can see, the weather is perfect for staggering around. Check this out. It's like a biblical out here. June. It's June. Well, I'm quite lucky here. I tend to use an old sump to drain my oil into because it's quite large and it's also got the capacity to cope with the oil. Uh, I think there's only about four and a half litres in the stag engine. I might be wrong, it might be five. Um, but yes, old, uh, a, a, an old sump does the job beautifully, standing in a drip tray. Um, so let me go and get that all out now. And as you can see, it's doing a beautiful job. It's got the right sort of dimensions, it's got the right sort of area. Yeah. Nice fragile plastic drip tree. Um, sorry, uh, uh, oil catcher or an old sump. It's even got its own drain plug on it, see? So it's easy enough to drain back into an oil can for responsible disposal. Oops, the wind's just blowing it. <laughs> that easy. <clears throat> it's quite breezy today. Right, drain this thing down, refill with oil, and then we can get going again. Yes. There's some rust under here I need to deal with. Just along the leading edge here of the... Just need to take this back. It's not devastating yet. Quite a few dead flies and things on this. Still catching it. It's more or less there actually. And then what I'll do is I'll disconnect the um, HT lead from the coil and I will um, just crank the engine over until the oil pressure starts to rise. 
And the next thing on this, once I've got rid of, sold Red Shed, um, or uh, Sandy the Landy, I need new tyres on this. These tyres are ancient. They are. Where are they? Dunlop. I think they're SP, SP200s. Oh, SP Sport, sorry. SP Sport 200. Nice tyres. I mean, I've done really, really well with these things. These are 18570 R14s. Um, H speed ratings. They're correct for the stag. Um, and the date marker on these is... Where is the date marker? I thought I saw the date marker on these. I can tell you I bought them in 2000. So these are 20 year old, these tyres. Uh, not responsible, Richard, uh, really. But then the car stored in the dark. It's probably done about 30,000 miles in those 20 years. Oh, here we are. Is that the date rating there? It's a three digit, no, it's a dot code, I think, on the pre 2000s. I can't find it. This, one of these is the date rating. Could be that one. 14 00, week 14 2000. Could be that. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Because I know I bought them in 2000. 3 KE 14 00. There you go. 2000. That's all four of them. So they all need replacing. I, yeah. <laughs> Your buttocks clench when you're on the motorway. Irresponsible. But that I means that. that they're not essentially, yeah, they've not gone, they're not crazed on the tire on the sidewalls, but the compound would have gone hard. Um, and you can see up here, they're starting to wear a little bit on the shoulder anyway. I think the fronts have been on this car for God knows how long, what the rear is like. They're in better shape, but again, replace the lot. Ah, oh, dear me. Right, so let's put that drain plug back in and top up. Oh. Pebbles. Right. Let that settle down. Check the oil level. We've done the oil change, I think. Right, this is the oil I use. It's Classic Oils 2050. 1300 ppm zinc as ZDDP. Apparently it's good for classic cars. There you go. 
and I bought some classic oils. Well, it's classic oils, but heard it UK. Anyway, top tip now avoid the bird shit. Just peel the labels off. The bottle's empty. I'm not going to use it for anything else, and I'll decant from the sump straight into this, and it goes off for a responsible waste. So, if there's ever a can in my workshop without a label on it, waste oil or waste water.